Welcome back to part two of the theory of picking barrel drivers. To briefly review, there are two phases of picking the barrel driver. Phase one is picking all the barrel drivers into the counter milling. In this phase, the barrels often behave like tapered pins. They require high levels of tension and small gentle nudges. This is done to minimize the risk of the overset. An overset key pin in phase one will cross the shear line and this configuration is difficult to recover from. Once all the barrels are in the counter milling, there is a distinct change in feedback. The barrels will start heavily binding and clicking when nudged to the next section of counter milling. This change in feedback indicates that the lock is now in phase two. Phase two consists of careful tension control to manipulate the barrel driver from the first section of counter milling to the second, and from the second to the third. The barrel is then easily nudged from the third milling and over mill to the shear line. As with any pin tumbler lock, one must differentiate a stiff driver pin from a springy one. This is the basis of the jiggle test and is done by bouncing the pick against the key pin to get feedback as it strikes the driver pin. A stiff driver pin is the bound one that must be picked. A springy driver pin should not be manipulated. It is either set at the shear line, as seen here, or unbound, as seen here, bouncing in the counter milling. Fortunately, bound pins in phase two are easy to identify. Since the barrel driver geometry matches the serrations of the plug, they will tightly couple to one another when bound. If the barrel driver is unbound in the counter milling, it will have some play and be springy. Further manipulation of a springy pin by forcefully pushing up on it will often lead to an overset. In phase one, an overset causes the key pin to cross the shear line. In phase two, this is very unlikely to occur. With heavier tension, it is near impossible to overset the barrel. In this example, I am really pushing hard on the key pin and the barrel is not budging at all. Only when you release enough tension and press hard enough will you begin the overset. This causes other set barrels in the lock to drop, which can be most easily recognized by sound. It is important to note that this is still an easily recoverable configuration as the key pin does not cross the shear line. However, if you keep pushing and drop enough pins, you can re-enter phase one and overset the key pin so that it does cross the shear line. Now is a good time to introduce our tension meter, where a one is feather light tension and a 10 is gorilla tension. If you apply too much tension, you will not be able to pick a pin as it will be too tightly bound. There will be a sweet spot of tension that will allow you to lift a bound driver into the next level of milling or the shear line. It is difficult to give a precise level of this tension as it is somewhat subjective, but I would assign it a moderate level of tension of around five or six. With this in mind, there are two tensioning strategies that may be employed at this stage of picking. Maintaining the sweet spot of constant moderate tension to both check if a pin is springy or bound and to pick the pin. Or tension modulation, which is using higher tension to check if a pin is bound or springy and then lowering tension to a moderate amount to pick the pin. I've tried both techniques and found them to both work well. Tension modulation reduces barrel drops and sweet spot tensioning allows for a quicker pick and in my experience, clearer feedback from the jiggle test. Let us now return where we left off with our cutaway with all the barrels in the first counter milling and finish the phase two pick. Here we see the relative positions of the three sections of counter milling in blue and the shear line. I'm going to dial down the tension a bit and use the constant sweet spot tension technique, which is jiggle testing and picking pins at the same level of tension. What is most important to pay attention to in this section is how I'm performing the jiggle test by bouncing the pick on the pin. If it's stiff, that means it's binding and needs to be picked. Springy means don't touch and move to the next pin. As I test pin two, it produces a click and feels springy. So I go to pin three 
which does the same thing. Pin four is springy, pin five is springy, pin six is heavily binding as I bounce the pick. It clicks up one level of milling and the pin is still stiff. I get another click and it's springy. Five is springy, four feels stiff, clicks, goes up a level of milling, now stiff again, click, and now it's springy. Three is springy, two is heavily binding. I want you to notice my pick slips off and strikes the chamber a couple of times, and that sounds like clicks. Now it clicks and it becomes springy. Three now is binding, clicks twice and becomes springy. Four is springy, five is binding, it clicks once, twice, three times, and now it's springy. Six is springy, five is springy, four is springy, three now is springy, two now is bound, and it opens. It was in the third section of overmilling and just needed a nudge. Now that we've examined the best strategies and feedback interpretation for picking both phases of the ASA barrel, let's take a look at some additional feedback that we may encounter. The ASA barrel locks provide additional feedback that can be quite confusing and lead to less optimal picking decisions. We will review two types of such feedback, click counting and counter rotation. As you pick a barrel driver up the pin chamber, it will produce four clicks. One, two, three, and four. So is it helpful to count these clicks to determine the pin position? Not really. We have previously seen that long key pins have drivers that start in the counter milling and will therefore have less clicks. The first click into the first section of counter milling may be quiet or non-existent with the first couple of barrels that set into the milling. The transition from the second to third section of the counter milling does not always produce a click. Oversetting a barrel in phase two will cause other unknown barrels to drop and the count will be off. And finally, pick slips that strike the plug can mimic clicks. For these reasons, testing each pin with a jiggle test is more reliable than counting clicks. The other feedback that can be confusing is counter rotation and its related counterpart, the false set. A false set occurs when a pin has a section of reduced diameter that crosses the shear line. This causes a finite movement of the plug in the same direction of lock tensioning. Counter rotation is the rotation of the plug in the opposite direction that you are tensioning the lock to open it. This is a rotational force a pin imparts on the plug as it straightens itself out to either clear the shear line as seen here with the spool pin or pass an obstacle like a serration as seen here with the ASA barrel. As the final barrels are set, they sometimes cause counter rotation. This does not always occur, and when it does, the amount is variable. It is dependent on the degree of the false set achievable in the given lock, which in turn depends on one or more of the following variables. In this video of the ASA guideline, you can see the counter rotation of the plug in the left panel as the last barrel is set. Sometimes counter rotation is so subtle that it can be felt in the tensioner but cannot be seen as movement of the plug. Counter rotation can also sometimes occur when oversetting pins in phase two. This is due to the key pin pressing against this section of the housing which widens the gap between the housing and the plug as it tries to squeeze past the shear line. Counter rotation with oversetting does not always occur, and when it does, the amount is variable. In this next video of the Ruko Garant Plus, I am intentionally oversetting the last key pin. The key pin is initially springy, which indicates that it should not be touched. As the pin is lifted, you will see counter rotation in the left panel and hear a click of the other barrels dropping, and then a dull thud as the key pin crosses the shear line. This last video shows exactly the same series of events with an overset minus the visible counter rotation. The last key pin is springy and intentionally overset. There is no counter rotation, but clicks are heard as barrels are dropped. And finally, the key pin crosses the shear line.
Since counter rotation may occur both when setting and over setting a barrel, this feedback can confuse you into picking the wrong pin. Once again, we see that the jiggle test is much more reliable in determining the binding pin that needs to be picked. Well, I hope that you enjoyed this video and perhaps learned something new. If you did, please like, comment, and subscribe. And I'll see you at the next one.